Yo, 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 peace was good. Um, I got a new series that um that I wanna call um that I wanna start and it's called DVD Collection. Um it's it's been inspired by my dude um <clears throat> Thomas Beats 1992. Uh, he's been wanting to see like my DVD collection. So it's similar to CD collections, but it's my DVDs. And no, I'm not gonna show Blu-ray because um, you know, I do have Blu-rays, but I don't have that much. So I'm gonna just show you guys mostly my DVDs, you know what I mean? So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys some of my DVD collections. There's a whole lot, I'm gonna have to make it parts because I got a shitload of DVDs, alright? So we start right here, alright. The Killer with John with um Charlie and Fat yo, um very good movie. You know um if you guys are familiar with um Only Built for Cuban Links, you know you guys should be familiar with that album. Um then um you should definitely be familiar with this movie right here because a lot of the samples as far as like the dialogue and stuff like that was taken from this right here. Very dope movie. It's, in my opinion. Chow Young Fat and John Woo in their prime prime years, in my opinion, before they got all Americanized and shit. When they started putting on bullshit like um bulletproof monk and all that nonsense, you know what I mean? This is before, you know, before all of that, you know what I mean? Um Yeah, this shit right here, very dope. I bought this for like ten bucks back in like 2006. Um I need to get this on Blu-ray. Eventually I'm gonna get all these in Blu-ray, but you know, for the time being, like, you know, and that costs money, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, John, um, the killer, John Woo, which I am fat. Um, what I like about it is in Cantonese, not in English. I prefer it in Cantonese. It sounds better because when it's dubbed, it, it just sounds stupid. That's just my opinion. But um, the killer, John Woo, Charlie and Fat, this was released in 1980, I believe 1989, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Next movie, The Prowler. This was released in 1981. This is a, a slasher film from back in the day. Uh, you know, it's pretty much about, um, it's also known as Rosemary's Killer. You know, it's about like a, a, like a, like a World War II vet, you know, gone crazy, started killing a whole bunch of people in the town. Um, reason being is because, um, there was a scene in the beginning where like, you know, there's couples, they're, they're like at like, at like the lake or whatever. They're like at a promenade, like, it's, like some type of prom or some type of dance. They wanted to go make out and then the killer ended up killing the couples and it's because of having that party right there. So, you know, that's why like, you know, for all these years, like the town didn't get a, um, they didn't throw a party or some shit like that. So, you know, and then, and, and, and um, you know, modern time, 1980, they do a party and then a whole bunch of shit happened. You already know what goes on with that, but the prowl is pretty good. Um, it's kind of a slow burn. It's kind of boring at times. Like it got some good kills, but it's a little slow. But you know, for you know, especially today's people, people, people today, you know, have very slow attention span. So it might be a snoozer, but it still got some dope, dope um kills and stuff like that. But yeah, the prowler. Released in um, 1981. I gotta get this on Blu-ray. All right, then we got Old Boy. This is a cult classic right here. Very dope. It's about a you know a Korean, a South Korean businessman that got abducted for like 15 years and stuff like that. And then like you know he gets out, they release him, and then he tries to go find the people that abducted him. He start killing people from one by one. It's pretty good. Um, very, very, very good movie. And no, I have not seen the Spike Lee movie, and I probably won't. I probably will see it, but I'm gonna wait till that shit come out on on cable or some shit, which it eventually will. But I'm not gonna go out my way and like you know go buy the movie. I will wait till the shit comes on cable. All right. But um, old boy, this is released in 2003. Cult classic right here. They got um. Fatal Attraction with um, Glenn Close and Michael Douglas, released in 1987. Uh, Fatal Attraction, classic movie right here. This movie right here tells you never to have a side piece. That's all I gotta say about that. If you have a side piece, yo, just make sure she's on point because Glenn Close, man, yo, oh my God. When you tell a, a, a girl like that, no, like she, she don't take no for an answer. That's all I gotta say about that. Definitely one of Michael Douglas' best movies, man. I mean, 
Glenn Close, she definitely stole the show in this movie, man. Glenn, um, Michael Douglas, that them working together, they work perfectly together, man. It's a very good movie right here. Highly recommend it, man. Um, dope thriller movie. Um, this was released in 1987. Another one I gotta get on Blu-ray. All right, this is Fatal Attraction. Sorry about that. You know my what's up. All right, then we got um. Bitchamu, um, I don't really remember this movie, uh, my cousin gave it to me, I, I, I seen it years ago, I've seen it like maybe like a year and a half ago maybe, I don't really remember, um, you know, what the movie is about, it's been a minute since I've seen it, but it's alright, it's not, it's not bad, you know, it's okay, uh, if you like Crouching, Hid Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like those kind of movies, then you'll definitely enjoy this, but it's not with the fake flying shit like that shit had but you know if you like that kind of shit then then you'll definitely enjoy this shit right here that's an embarrassed man going in the background then we got um one of my favorite movies and very slept on very underrated i rarely hear people talk about that is white boys this movie is fucking funny as shit yo this shit is such a classic um very underrated and very and hard to come by. It's kind of rare, you know what I mean. Um, I got lucky and I found it, you know, um, years ago. I maybe like over like maybe like ten years ago. I was when I found this shit. But yeah, this movie right here is fucking sick. Um, it's pretty much about these white boys, you know, these boys from um, or teenagers, I guess, maybe in their twenties or whatever, early twenties, from what I understand. Um, they grew up in like in a you know a small midwestern town. You know what I mean? You know, farmers and all that shit. And um, they think they're black. You know what I mean? Like, they think they they, they try to go, they go, pretty much wiggers is what I'm trying to see. You got a whole bunch of wiggers thinking they black. And then when they try to go, yo, we got to go to Chicago. And then, you know, when they go to Chicago, they get like a rude awakening and stuff like that. It's a pretty good movie, man. Um, To me, in, in my opinion, this movie inspired movies like... um. You know Malibu's Most Wanted and stuff like that, but I think this is way better than Malibu's Most Wanted. But if you can find it, I highly recommend it. This came out in 1999. Um, this dude right here, um, his real name, uh, Danny Hosh, I think is his name. Yeah, he he's a hip hop head, so he always like I remember back in the day he used to be on MTV, just like you know, just you know, spitting some real shit about the hip hop world and stuff like that. But he's really cool, man. Um, white boys, and you, as you can see, you see like um, has Snoop Dogg, Fat Joe, That Press, Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh, uh, Mike Geronimo's on this joint too. Um, pretty dope. Kind of carry, kind of. When you watch this, you definitely feel like you were in 1999. You just get, you can just tell by the soundtrack, the clothes that they wore and stuff like that. But very, very good. Highly recommended. All right, then we got uh, Two Box Murders. Uh, this is the remake. This came out in 2004. Was it 2000? Yeah, 2004. Um, not to be confused with the original. Uh, this one right here is like a di bit different from the original. Um, you know, it's like about a girl that goes into like a, a hotel. It's kind of abandoned in a sense. I think she's like the only tenant there. And then like a whole bunch of killings happens in the, in the, in the hotel and stuff like that. It's pretty good right here. It's pretty dope. Um, if you can find it, definitely pick it up. See how much time I got left. Alright. So that's the time. Then we got on Unhinged. Uh, this was released in 1982. Um, in a nutshell, not very good. You know, it's just it's a slasher film. Kind of boring in a sense. You know, it's about these three girls that got um. I think they um. What was it? They. They going somewhere and then like they get the car like broke down and stuff like that. And they go into this like big ass mansion and this girl and then, you know and then they get taken care of. They get you know brought in by this lady and stuff like that. And a whole bunch of killings happen and stuff like that. Um, it's okay. It's not the best movie in the world, but this is unhinged. Oh, you gotta love this. You know, um, you gotta love the taglines. The nightmare begins when you wake up. <laughs> it's funny. That's pretty dope, but um, yeah, it's okay. It's alright. It's not the best. It's funny because I think this movie is under video nasties. 
but some of them not not even worth being called video nasties. If you know what I mean. But then you, you gotta remember, this is like the early '80s and '70s and stuff like that. So then we got the original Fog that came out in 1980. This is a classic movie right here. I highly recommend this movie right here. Um, John Carpenter, you can't. John Carpenter, you can't go wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Very good. Oh, let me. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that, man. John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, very, very dope, man. I mean, the music. You can't go wrong with the music. John Carpenter's scores. Fucking dope, man. Like, um, I need to get the Blu-ray version, but you know, that's just out of print. It's hard to come by, and it's, it's pretty pricey. But, um, yeah, I highly recommend this joint right here. Um, The Fog. This was released in um 1980. Definitely one of John Carpenter's best films, and the score in this movie, fucking dope. Then we got um I Drink Your Blood. Um, this was released in 1970. Um, very, 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 it's a unique movie, it's a, it's a pretty interesting movie, man, um, it's pretty much about, like, these rabbit dogs, um, it's, it's, it's these, you know, it's these people that, um, serve, like, you know, rabbit, like, rabbit meat pies and stuff like that, and, uh, you got these hippies, you know, that's just, like, just causing troubles, it's like being a menace to, to the town, it's just fucking with people and stuff like that. And then like um, these is people that sell meat pies that everybody loves and shit like that. But then I think there was a scene where like um, I think the boy added like um, or somebody I forgot what it was. I think it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but they um added like blood of a rabbit dog or whatever or a rabbit something like some type of rabbit animal animal, and they added to the meat pies and then like the the hippies become like. You know zombies and shit like that it, it, it's fucking crazy man but yeah i drink your blood this was released in i think 1970 or 1970 no 1971 yeah very low budget looking but it's, it's pretty interesting man but um i highly recommend if you like that kind of like zombie type of films then definitely do if you like like not maybe maybe not zombies but like you know that whole rabid you know people get poisoned and become like crazy they all get all crazy and shit like that but yeah, I Drink Your Blood released in um, 1971. Then we got uh, Mob Deep's Infamous Allegiance Part 1. Uh, this was released in 2000, I want to say 2003 or 2002. Um, well, this is pretty much a DVD. It's just like a, a behind the scenes. You see them going on tour. Um, you know, just see them like, you know, just doing like some, you know, studio sessions and things like that. And it's cool because it comes with, you know, a, a CD, like the soundtrack, as you can see, like the track list in here, and stuff like that. You see them on tour doing like video shoots and stuff like that. So this was, I believe, was recorded, you know, around the Free, um, the free Agents mixtape around that time. Like, you know, around that, like 2002, 2003, you know, like right after, you know, the Infamy album. So it was re recorded around that time. So... If you guys like that, then you'll definitely enjoy this joint right here. I I'm a big mob fan. You guys know that. So, um, hard to come by. It's out of print. I need to get part two. Um, I'll get that one day. You know, when I if I see it for a good price, you know, I'll definitely check that joint out. But um, get I mean get it for my collection. But yeah, um, Infamous Allegiance, uh, part one. And it's crazy too because some of the studio sessions. Like, they have so... The thing with Mob Deep, man, like, they have so many songs in the vaults, man, that they need to put out, yo. And it's just, yo, know, it's fucking crazy. And, like, some of those songs are better than their albums. Like, I hate to say it like that, but it's true, because they got some shit, man. But, you know, it is what it is. But this is Mob Deep, Infamous Allegiance, Part 1, released in 2003. See how much time I got left. Yes. What's it? Yeah, still got some time. Then we got um, Summer Party Massacre Part 2. Uh, it was released in 1986. This is supposed to be a sequel to the second one. I mean, to the first one, but... um, It's okay. It's okay. The killer is kind of laughable. It's kind of like, you know, he's kind of like a, like a skinny Elvis... You know, like yeah, like a skinny Elvis, like from the 70s, like that kind of like that, like a killer with a killer 
a guitar and stuff like that. It, it's it's alright. It's not the best, you know what I mean? It's kind of laughable at the chance, but I prefer the first one in my opinion. But you know, I just had to get this drink right here. I bought this at the um, the now defunct um store that I used to go to movies, movie music, movies and more, which I fucking miss. That used to be on um Forest Hill Boulevard. But right now that's just like a doctor's office now. But um, I just get all my movies. I just get some of my movies there, and I miss that place right there, man. But you know it is what it is. But yeah, this is Summer Party Massacre Part Two. Uh, this was released in 1986. If you can find it, pick it up. Kind of hard to come by. Very hard. Very rare. You know you're not gonna get it at like Best Buy, like Fye. You have to probably like go on like eBay or some shit like that. You know Amazon to get these joints right here. Then we got the Omega Man right here. Um, pretty good movie right here with Charles, Charles with Charlton Heston. Um, the Omega Man. It's the movie that inspired you know movies like um, I Am Legend and stuff like that. Um, but there was a movie before this called The Last Man on Earth that came out in 1964. But I need I need to get my hands on it. I haven't seen it. I want to see that joint right there. But um, this is the second. This is the second installment of that, and I Am Legend will be the third, you know, installment of that. Um, but it's pretty much like, you know, these two humans that, you know, just they're, they're pretty much like the last humans on Earth and they got like these, like, these, not zombie, but like, I guess like zombie vibe type of dudes that's just like going around like terrorizing the whole Earth and stuff like that. And this movie caused some controversy because um, Charlton Heston had a, 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 a kiss scene with the black, um, uh, I forgot the I forgot her name. Um, I guess her name is Rosalind Cash. Well, there was a scene where they kissed, and you gotta remember this is 1971, so racism at the time was very big at that time. So, um, you know, so that that caused a lot of you know controversy and stuff like that. So, I I know he caught a lot of flack for that, but you know, um, Charlton Heston he died years ago. So, but yeah, um, the Omega Man. Released in 1971. I believe I believe I have this on Blu-ray. I think I, I believe I do. But yeah, um, the Mega Man by Charlton Heston released in 71. And we got one of my favorite movies, The Hills Have Eyes. I believe this is Wes Craven's third movie that he made or his second movie. But it came out in 1977. This is the OG copy. This is the original. Um, this movie this is the 2003 Anchor Bay um, edition. Um, this movie is pretty much about like you know this family from Cleveland, um, Ohio. They trying to go their way to um, to California, but they get stuck. Their car breaks down in the desert, like somewhere like I think like in like you know Arizona or Nevada or some shit like that. And then like you know you got this kind of like this inbred family that is like terrorizing them like killing them and stuff like that it's actually pretty good man um very scary i love the score in this movie i love the movie so much that i copied the, the soundtrack yeah that's how much of a fan i am of this movie right here very dope movie very dope score i love this shit I've been trying to get my hands on like i've been trying to find like the music for it but it, it was hard to get but then um Shout out to the people of One Way Static Records, you know, that I guess got all the dats and like all the rights from the movie from Don Peak. The same composer that did um, the Knight Riders theme song and like the, you know, the score for that series, you know, did this joint right here. So, you yeah, got all the stuff that was in the movies is on this joint right here. Um, highly recommend it. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. Um, you're not going to find it in any store. You have to go online to get it. I got mine on eBay. I think I got it for like. 20 something dollars, but it was definitely worth the money, man. I fucking love this shit right here. All right, and very dope. Then we got this movie right here, He Knows You're Alone. This was released in 1980. Um, it, it's, it's a slasher film, but it's like more of a more like a thriller in a sense, you know. Um, you know, it's about this girl, you know. She has a feeling that somebody's stalking her and stuff like that, and like she's just like always paranoid. And what's interesting with in this movie is that um, this is Tom Tom Hanks' first appearance on, on film, so this would be his first movie that he has. Um, it's pretty decent. It's not bad. It has a nice score to it. You know, I like it. You know, it's a typical 1980s thriller type of movie, but um, 
It's it's pretty good. It's not the best, but it's not bad. I highly recommend it. And we got um the last horror film, uncut the uncut special edition. This was released in 1982. Um, it's with um Joe Spinell of of um <clears throat> of um Maniac fame, one of my favorite horror movies, and um Carol um Caroline Monroe, yeah Caroline Monroe, both from Maniac. Uh, they appeared again. Um, this is a trauma release. Uh, like I said. It's pretty much about, um, you know, Joe Spinell, he plays as, like, as a taxi driver, and he's obsessed with this girl, Caroline Monroe, like an actress, to the point where like he actually goes to Cannes, to the Cannes Film Festival, just to go see her, like to act dinner with her and stuff like that. And it, it, it's just crazy, but um, this movie is like more, it felt more like a comedy more so than a thriller movie, than a slasher film. It's okay, it's not his best movie, but um, I was kind of expecting more of the maniac, that type of thing. Like, maybe not that particular, um, particular. You know, obviously not the particular plot, but you know, at least as far as like the violence and the gore and shit like that, I was kind of wanted that kind of thing. But you didn't really get this. It was like this felt more like a like a um, comedy film. So I was a little disappointed with this genre right here. It's okay, but. If you're a if you're a fan of Joe Spinell, then I would highly recommend picking it up. You know, if you're not really a big fan, then I wouldn't recommend it. But um, to add to your Joe Spinell collection, I would I would pick it up. But um, it's okay. It could have been better. Then we got a uh, Mother's Day. This is the original version, released in 1980. Um, very very dope. Uh, it's about these girls that you know again it's kind of like with unheads where they get um they get the car breaks down in like in the forest or whatever and you got these two sons they get they're kind of like retarded in a sense and you got this mom who's like you know like this she's the, the head honcho like she's like the killer but i mean the the both the two sons right here are the killers but she's like the the evil queen so whatever she says they'll do and stuff like that so it's actually pretty good right here i i highly recommend it even a remake with um rebecca de monet the remake of that, that came out i believe in i want to say 2010 2011 i think it came out was actually pretty good but it doesn't top this this shit right here very dope i love the score for this movie um this is another trauma release very dope um do i have that on blu-ray no i don't think i do um, but I definitely have to get my hands on it. If I do, I think I do. I'm not sure. But uh, it came out on Blu-ray. I highly recommend it. If you can find it, pick it up. One of those, it's one of these movies that you're not going to find in FYE or any of those places. Depending on, depending on the city that you're in. But um, if you find this for a decent price, definitely pick it up. Obviously buy the Blu-ray. Um, if that's your kind of thing. If not, find a DVD. It should be cheap. Um, but yeah, um, Mother's Day, the director's cut, released in 1980. Then we got um, Off The Hook. This is released in 1999. Um, for all my hip hop heads, this is like the biography and the come up of the group Posnag, who are, you know, kind of, um, I guess affiliates of DITC at one point. You know, they used to roll with them in, back in the day. Um, maybe not, roll with them but they, I guess they, they, they were kind of associated with them because you know Lord Finesse used to, used to um, do, do work with them and stuff like that um, Lord Finesse does a score it's actually pretty good man um, very gritty yeah, it's pretty much like your typical it's not that shoot shoot them up bang bang I mean you do get that but it's just pretty much a group that's trying to like you know trying to get put on but like the thing with Paz Neg is that um, what stands for positive negative you got this dude right here, um, Walter, who's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, trying to be on the positive, you know, whereas this my man, Lorenzo, who got killed in real life, with what the movie's based on in real life, um, you know, he's more dabbled into the streets and stuff like that, and Walter, he's trying to pull him back in, into the music shit, like, yo, we got this music going, music shit going on, like, Yo, we can't fuck with the streets and that type of things. Hey, hey, you already know how that shit goes, but yeah, pretty good. I love the score. The music is dope in here. 
you really feel late 90s New York. The video, however, is not is not the best in quality. It's very gritty looking, but I like that and it kind of fits them. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, off the hook, if you can find it, pick it up. I got it off um, Amazon. I got it for like two bucks. So, but yeah, very dope, very underrated. I don't really hear people too many, too many people talk about this movie, but very dope. If you like DITC, like Showbiz and AG, like that that kind of shit, then you'll definitely enjoy this joint right here. Then we got um, Kid Dog Hood. This was released in 2004. Um, I've heard good things about this. I have yet to watch this. Yes, I know. I bought it maybe a couple years ago. I haven't watched it yet. Just been so busy with other shit. But um, one day I would have to just sit down and check it out. And um, I heard good things about this movie. You know, um, this is about these teenagers that just like you know just in England that you know just like these bad boys, these bad boys and girls. You know, just like these thugs, man. It's just like terrorize the city and shit like that, man. Um, heard good things about this, and um, I believe there's a sequel to that called Adult Club. Um, but yeah, highly recommended. I heard good things about it. I heard it's really gritty, grimy. Um, if you can find it, pick it up. I found it. I got it for like three ninety nine at Fye. So I got it a couple years ago. Very dope. I definitely gotta check it out. But all right, adult hood. See how much time I got left. Uh, let me show a couple more. Times. I'm about to turn it off. Then we got Akira right here. Just released in nineteen eighty eight. It's a classic anime. One of the best to ever come out. I mean, this is this is such a dope movie right here, man. I highly recommend this movie right here. This is fucking sick right here. Then we got a Blade in the Dark. This is a Lam Lamberto Bava movie. Um, I believe now Lamberto is Mario Bava's son. So this came out in 1983. It's about a composer that um, a film movie composer that has to make a score for the movie, like a like a slasher film. But then, like, you know, there's a whole bunch of killings like, happening when he's in a, in, a, in a mansion and stuff like that, so... And it, it's just crazy. It's, it's a nice thriller. It's like a nice giallo film, so, um... But yeah, if you like giallo films, like, you know, like, um... Dario Argento type of films, then you'll definitely enjoy this, but... It's not as complex as Dario Argento. It's like, it's kind of straightforward, you know what I mean? Because if, you, if you're if familiar with uh, Dario Argento, you know some of his stuff is kind of complex, kind of hard to follow, you, you have to really... Pay attention to his movies, but um, Blade in the Dark, released in 1983. Love the score in this movie right here. And I'm gonna show the last movie, and it is The Toolbox Murders. This was released in 1988. I mean, 1978. Um, yeah, it's just pretty much about you know. Um, it, it takes place in Los Angeles. I believe, I believe it's in Lo yes, it's in Los Angeles, and you got this killer that's doing the killing sprees around the. Um, you know, around the you know the apartment complex and stuff like that, um, like, you know, kind of like the townhouses and stuff. Um, but this movie was okay. I thought it could have been a little bit better. It felt more like a TV movie, if anything. But the kills were pretty decent. But you know, it's okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all my um show for today, cause I know my time's gonna run out. So shout out to my dude Thomas Beats, 1992. Uh, definitely show more. Uh, probably tonight or tomorrow. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Peace.